Let's discuss what it means for the November elections as the power of the federal government hangs in the balance. Joining me now is MSNBC political contributor Jason Johnson. He joins me on set. And Latasha Brown, co-founder of Black Voters Matter, joins us remotely. Thank you both for being here. Latasha, you know you and I, uh, we joined forces in a Washington Post op-ed where we said just this very thing, Joe Biden, America needs a black woman Supreme Court justice. So I must first just get your take on this nomination and what it means uh, for this moment in history. Well, let me say this. Um, President Biden kept his word. At the end of the day, he said that he would appoint a black woman and he appointed a black woman and a black woman that for us to be proud of, who has an impeccable record, who I think will bring a certain kind of insight to the to the Supreme Court. You know, her history of being able to be a, a defense attorney, you know, to work with those who have been on the other side of, of the law, that the civil rights that were necessary and needed for her to stand in that space, I think she brings a wealth of knowledge and experience, but also a particular perspective that has been missing from that court for over 233 years. I echo your uh, thoughts, Latasha. And yes, this is indeed an example of uh, the president keeping his word uh, to the American people and certainly those voters in South Carolina where he initially made this commitment. Jason, I want to turn to you because, uh, look, we have watched several confirmation hearings over the years, and I you know, cannot help but think of Justice Kavanaugh. Um, every time I hear a Republican uh, member of, of Congress uh, say something negative about a, a candidate, or make uh, negative comments, I am reminded of this exchange when Justice Kavanaugh himself sat before the Senate Judiciary Committee. Take a listen. Did you consume alcohol during your high school years? Yes, we drank beer. Uh, my friends and I, the boys and girls, yes, we drank beer. I liked beer, still like beer. We drank beer. The drinking age, as I noted, was 18, so the seniors were legal. Senior year in high school, people were legal to drink and we drink yeah we drank beer and I said sometimes sometimes probably had too many beers and sometimes other people had too many beers what we drank beer we liked beer Jason my question to you does Justice Kavanaugh like beer you think I wasn't clear about that, <laughs> Tiffany. In fact, I really had to rewind it several times. It's like, did he like beer? Was Squee there? Were the rest of the was crew Toby there? there yeah, was Toby there beer? when he drank yeah. his beer? Um, you know, this is the thing. And I remember we were on this set yeah. talking about this at the time several That's years right. ago. I remember my students at Morgan State, people were riveted by what happened with Kavanaugh. Yeah. And it actually, in many respects, is the beginning of a diminishment of respect that a lot of American people have for the Supreme Court because yeah. they saw someone who didn't just appear to be unfit in, in presentation for the court, but had a lot of legitimate questions about his background, where he got certain money, how he paid off certain bills, things he did in previous administrations, information that Republicans refused to release. And so what I see now is you can't bring up the kind of pushback against Biden's nominee that you have with Kavanaugh, because she's clean. Yeah, I mean, exactly. objectively speaking, you're not going to get this far as an African-American woman in this country if yeah. you don't have a better record than almost anybody else that you would be competing or potentially be nominated. Yeah, against. or live your life as though you may one day be before exactly. a Senate confirmation hearing. And look, she put her story out there herself. She said, yeah, I got an uncle who got caught up. Let me just let y'all know that's true. Now let's move on. Uh, but really, I'm prepared for the disrespect to come uh, from the mostly white Senate judiciary. There's one woman on there, Senator Marsha Blackburn from Tennessee. It'd be very curious how uh, she uh, responds to this nominee. Uh, but the disrespect respect that black women have faced across politics, uh, really. Uh, you remember the exchange between uh, Vice, then Senator Harris, yes. uh, now Vice President Harris, uh, when she was able to question uh, Justice Kavanaugh. It was quite striking. Uh, Natasha, I want to bring you back in the fold because it's not just on the Supreme Court, but there was a Senate debate in Ohio uh, between Senate candidates Morgan Harper um, and this guy Josh Mandel. And I want you to take a listen to how he spoke to her, and we'll talk about it on the other side. Let me tell you something, ma'am. Mr. Mandel, I put my life in the hands of Mr. young Mandel, black guys. Mr. I had young Mandel, black men put their life in my hand in the United Mr. States Mandel, Marine Corps and two tours in I'm Iraq. To so don't stand first. there and lecture me. Mr. Those Mr. are my brothers. Whether they were black or they were white Mr. or they Mandel. were Hispanic or they were Asian, those are my brothers in the Marine Corps. So Mr. don't stand there and lecture me about race and color. Mr. We Mandel, put our lives in each other's Mr. hands. Mandel. Those are my brothers as Marines. 
Okay, so that was a different sound by earlier in the debate. He uh, accused uh, Morgan Harper of not being uh, smart. Uh, she, of course, refused to shake his hand uh, in the debate after the level of disrespect. But I wanted to play that by Latasha just to show uh, some of the aggression that black women face and to brace ourselves for what we might see come out of the Republican uh, side of the Judiciary Committee when uh, Judge Jackson goes before confirmation hearings. But just if you were speaking to her, your piece of advice you might offer uh, about navigating that space because you most certainly certainly uh, have experienced your own share, as, as have we all. You know, I think this is the moment that what this country is looking for and what we need is we need someone with courage and with clarity. And so I hope that when she is speaking about her record, that she stays to the facts. The bottom line is her record is impeccable. You know, she is a scholar. She has been a, a practitioner. She's been a judge. She's been confirmed three times. And I think that her best bet is to stand in a space of having courage and clarity because we need that kind of sense of courage and clarity on the court. I think that it is also, I wanna share with her that there are hundreds of thousands of people who literally, who she represents our voices. That she is literally, if this was a moment that we needed a clear leadership on the Supreme Court, it would be now when we're seeing voting rights be attacked every single day when we're seeing the stripping of the, the section, section five in the Voting Rights Act, and now we're on the threat of seeing section two be stripped from the Voting Rights Act. And so we need someone who's gonna stand on, the, on that court with courage to be able to write, help write those opinions, help literally be a voice for those who've actually been marginalized out the process. And I also wanna send a message to her to let her know that we've got your back. That at the end of the day, your qualifications are impeccable. But one thing about race is that they are quite consistent. There's an effort to really be able to undermine, attack our character, our intellect. But I think that there are millions of Americans that can actually see, a, see past that. And we will be showing up, I think, in force. We're going to make sure that we're lifting up this sister in prayer and that we're also organizing and putting pressure. We are ready for the fight. Uh, well, can't stop, won't stop. Latasha Brown stays ready. Jason and Johnson and uh, Latasha Brown will both be sticking around with us. Coming up next, tens of thousands of Ukrainian refugees are fleeing to neighboring polling. We'll take you to the border. Keep it right here.